captured with EV for You custom conversions. And in this episode, we're answering a viewer's question. And it relates to a, a video we recently did on uh, adapters, couplers, and motor mounts. He asked, he wanted to see how uh, we heated the coupler and put it on the shaft. And so in this short little video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to install the coupler on the shaft so that those who are interested can see how it's done. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. One is that you can heat the coupler up in an oven and uh, doesn't have to be very hot. Maybe heat it up till it's like 250 degrees. Make sure you use gloves or something to protect yourself from that hot piece of metal. And once it's heated, we're going to slide it on the shaft. And you got to make sure that it's seated all the way on the shaft. And when we do this, you're going to hear it go clink, you know, and it, it will be you know, on there. And so, I don't know uh, what we didn't show, I'd have to review the video, but I'll give you a close up view of the shaft here. There's a little shoulder and then the inner race of a bearing. We're basically gonna slide this coupler to where this inside edge seats right up against that shoulder on the shaft. So we're gonna change the camera angle, let you have kind of a close-up view there. Now, instead of heating this with, uh, in an oven, I'm gonna use a heat gun. Because it's rather cold down here in the shop, this and the shaft are both cold right now. So by heating this with a heat gun, I can get enough heat on this that I can slide it on there. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll change camera angles, and uh, I'll show you how long it takes to heat it up, and, uh, and then we'll slide it on. And uh, like I said, be listening for that bottoming out. When I, when I put this all the way on, you'll hear it go clink. And then I'm going to hold it in place so it doesn't back off at all. OK? Stay with me. So here's a close-up of the motor shaft and the shoulder that I'm talking about. So right here's the shoulder. And then this right here, that's the inner race of the bearing. So you'll see it turns with the shaft. And this is the outer portion of a bearing. Okay, so we'll heat up the coupler and we'll slide it on the shaft. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to use a heat gun <clears throat> to heat this coupler up. Wearing gloves to protect our hands from the heat. Now, I don't have to heat up the entire coupler because only this uh, portion from the shoulder here out slips on the shaft. But I'm going to concentrate the heat on this one half of the coupler. Now, it, it does take a few minutes to do it this way. But like I mentioned earlier, since there's a pretty good temperature differential in here today, nice and cold, I don't have to heat this as hot as I would when it's hot in the shop. I know. Listening to the heat guns probably more entertaining than listening to me. Now, if you can't slip it on, slip it on all the way because you didn't get it hot enough, 
you just simply pull it back off and do it again. Look, I'm going to try to make sure I have it plenty hot so we can do it in one shot here. I know it's getting hot it's when, uh, when my hand starts getting uncomfortable in the glove. <laughs> That's kind of the indicator I'm using. When I don't like holding this anymore, then we're going to slip it on the shaft. Trying to direct some flow into the inner part of this coupler, as well as the outside. And it's starting to get uncomfortable here. The heat gun's really blowing out some heat at this point. And when I'm shooting it into the inner part of this coupler, it kind of channels the heat into my palm. So let's, let's see if it'll go. Remember, listen for that noise. Bang, it's on there. So I'm gonna hold it there. I'll just hold it there for, you know, a bit, let it cool down, make sure it cools down and is held in, in place. And it slid on real easy, so I had it plenty hot. So, but, uh, it's not a big deal, it's pretty easy to do. And again, depending on the amount of clearances, um, the ones that we manufacture, this is made by Canadian Electric Vehicles, uh, theirs isn't quite as tight a fit as the ones that we make. Once we make, you gotta heat them up good to get them to, to slide on there. But then when they cool down, they're tight. And I don't know what that spec is that we use. We have a, an engineer that does all of our uh, technical specs for us. And so whatever he specifies on the uh, CAD drawings, that's the way they make them. So anyway, that's it. It's, it's on there. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I can't pull it off by hand. As a matter of fact, in a moment, uh, I'll put a puller on this and I'll show you the effort it takes to extract this thing back off the shaft. Well, we showed you how we heat the coupler to install it. So, let me show you just how well an interference fit holds. We're going to remove the coupler from the motor using this puller. So the only thing that's holding this on there right now is the fact that it's an interference fit. And so this is a real fine thread on this puller. Now this coupler came from Canadian Electric Vehicles. It's not quite as tight as the ones that we make when we make a similar one. Ours are a little, a little tighter fit. It takes a lot more torque to get it off. But even this, you know, we have to walk it all the way off. So that was just to show you the removal process. Typically once you put one of these on, you're never going to take it off. Well, I hope that answered the viewer's question. Not so much the question, but you know, showed him what he was wanting to see. And if you have any questions, please address them to info at ev 4 and we'd be happy to answer your questions, whether it be by email or, in some instances, uh, by video. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.